I recently did a review on the iPad mini 6 gen and I wanted to give you my top 7 favorite apps to use. I'm an Android user when it comes to phones, but I do love iPads and part of that love comes from some of these apps. Well, there are some killer apps out there that do real cool things. Today, I'll be focusing on apps that I recommend using for everyday actual use, whether it's productivity or entertainment. I'm Jesse Sanchez and thanks for tuning in to the Ultra Tech channel. Let's get started. Today I have a guest, my niece Sarai, who is a big time Apple user and is also into tech just like me. She will be helping me show you some of these apps. Hi everyone, all these apps are not ranked in any specific way, but they all get used depending on the situation. Most of these apps are free, but if they're not, we'll mention the price. GoodNotes lets you take notes and takes advantage of the powerful Apple Pencil. You can create multiple notebooks with different styles of papers and colors. You can also choose different pencil colors, thickness, eraser mode, and you're able to quickly undo changes when you make a mistake. I used this heavily with my iPad Pro when I was getting my MBA last year, and I have now used it on the iPad Mini 6, and it's still great to take notes with. You're also able to make some nice looking graphs and import pictures, but I usually stick to just basic note taking. The price for this app is $7.99, but it's all worth it. With the world in chaos, countries ready to attack each other and COVID on the spread, it's always important to stay on top of what's happening around the world or locally. Like when I tune in to read that the New York Jets have lost again, come on Jets. The number two app is Flipboard, which lets you read news and content presented in a beautiful looking magazine style experience. That goes perfect with the iPad mini, as it feels like you have a real magazine in your hand, and flipping through pages just feels great. Flipboard are not the ones producing these articles, but they aggregate content from social media, news feed, and photo sharing sites and other websites. I still recommend you to always check your sources of articles that you read. I'm not sure if I'm alone on this one, but I have about eight email addresses that I have to use. These include email addresses for work, content creation, and the three additional addresses to keep getting a free trial of Fubo TV. For the number four app, I'm recommending Spark Email. I struggled for a while finding an app on Android and Apple that will show all of my mailboxes with a nice dark background and the layout where all inboxes are combined and I can see all my emails from different boxes come in without having to switch through mailboxes. If you don't like this style, you can also take advantage of Smart Inbox where it will show you the newest emails separated by mailbox. I absolutely love this app and a big shout out to this company for keeping it for free. Don't you hate it when you want to see how a destination you're going to looks, but it looks too small on your phone and you don't want to turn on your computer? For the number three app, it's Google Earth. We all know and use this app, but it goes perfectly with the iPad mini as the A15 chip renders everything ultra fast and you can take a quick view of the address you're headed to and without having to waste time. You can also take this with you when you're on the go, making it convenient for any situation. For the number five app, I'm recommending the Amazon Kindle app for iOS. We all love buying Amazon Prime products, and for me that includes buying Kindle books because they're cheaper than buying the actual print and the convenience to instantly have the book within seconds. This app on the iPad works great as it lets me choose a dark background that takes it easy on the eyes and I'm also able to change reading mode to continuous scrolling, which I prefer over flipping pages. This app is free and does its job perfectly. Similar to Flipboard, a nice alternative to use is the app called Google News. It also aggregates news and articles from different sources and lets you organize everything from topics that you like. Flipboard looks a little better polished, but Google News is still a good app to use as a backup and to get articles that may be missing from Flipboard. 
My last but not least favorite app is Plex. I use a network attached storage and have a Plex server set up where I can watch movies, TV shows, and live TV. With the Plex app, you can view your content even if you're not home and it looks and sounds great. It also renders your videos very fast and can watch content instantly. The only negative is that you need to have Plex Pass in order to use the app in mobile devices, which will run you $4.99 a month or around $80 a year for Plex Lifetime Pass when it goes on sale. Otherwise, it's around $120. I hope this video has helped you find apps that will help you stay productive, entertained, and happy. I use all of the above mentioned apps all the time and only recommend them because I actually use them myself. If you have any other app that you think I should use, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed the content. Until next time, Ultra, Ultra Tech, Tech out. out. <laughs>